So, so you're in high school and you are legendary for having a crew. Um, you got pretty much the same boys around you that I'm, I'm assuming you met in high school. Is that high correct? school? Yeah, that's absolutely correct. Yep, crazy. So hood. When you mm-hmm. guys are in high school, is that where you started your DJing at? Nah, I couldn't afford turn. I wanted to DJ, but I couldn't afford turntables yet. So I, I got two pause tape. Like I'm doing pause tapes with two tape decks. <laughs> that's how I'm making mixtapes. Um, and no, so DJing wasn't in my mind yet, but I was like. I want to do something. So at that time in Miami, the clubs weren't really rocking hip hop yet. It was like super underground, illegal shit. Uh, There was underground radio, pirate radio, wasn't on commercial radio. So I'm like, so anybody that did anything hip hop, like the whole city came out, you know, everybody, anybody that was into hip hop in the city. So I was like, all right, man, let's, let's just do a company, production company and throw parties. And that was the initial. Okay. Stop there for a second. Are you out of high school or are you still in high school? I'm graduating. It's 1993. I'm graduating, and this is where my mind's at. This I is start, where your I, mind's at. I conceptualize my company. I tell my my boys, half of it was like a crew of 20 of us. Mm-hmm. I tell a lot of them, and they a lot of them start laughing. They were like, "Come on, man! Like, what you you think you're gonna do something for hip hop out of Miami, out of out of the area we live in, Kendall and my? They're like, come on, man! Like, you don't know anybody in the industry. Like, what are you gonna do? Like, what can we do? And I was like, I don't know. I don't know what we're gonna do, but I'm gonna do something. And half of the crew was with it. The other half, eh, I, don't, I don't see it. And, and then that's right out of high school. I, I, first thing I did is throw a party. I threw a jam. Uh, actually, where I'm at right now, it's two blocks away from here. It's a car body shop that my friend's father owned. And when he went away for the weekend, they, they closed the body shop. We went in, cleaned everything up. The father didn't know anything about it. We already had flyers out in the streets, got the DJ set up. <laughs> and we threw a jam, you know, a warehouse party. And it got shot up. It's these two rival crews and gangs came, they shot it up and uh, the cops came and they were like, if we ever see anything with this, it was CHP, we put it, you know, crazy productions. If we ever see this again, we're going to shut you down. And, and that was, but, but you know, that made us infamous in Miami. Uh-huh. That actually helped the brand. Um, and then we just kept doing stuff after that. Can I take a step back for a second? Because I want to, I want to, I want to get into the mindset of a young EFN at the time. And this is, you know, it's something that I see across so many successful people. Even before you started your business, you saw it. Mm -hmm. You you, you had a concept, you had a vision, you understood what it was that you wanted to create and what it was that you wanted to bring to, at that time, your area, Miami. Right. Right. And number two, and this is a part of, of, of the story that I really want to highlight because this is where most people get derailed because right. they tell their big idea to the people closest to them, people who love them, people mm-hmm. who hang out with them, support them, and have their back in every other area of life. Right. But because those people can't see your big dream they who do you know yeah how are you gonna do that and more times than not that discourages people and they put their dream their dream on the back burner and say yo you know what he's right or you know what she's right and because of that that one idea that seed that could have blossomed into something huge never comes to fruition because it was buried long before it ever got a chance to get off the ground. So I'm glad you brought that story up. Yep. I, I, I tell that to anybody I come across that asks me for advice. I tell them, look, the, the first people that are going to be the naysayers in your life are the people that actually love you. You know, and you have to understand that and understand that they don't see your vision and you got to make a decision that you got to be stronger than than because that that hurts when the people that love you don't believe in you. So you got to be bigger than that. Your vision has to be, you know, you really have to understand your vision and see it all the way through. See it clear. Yeah, I mean, um, this is something that if, you know, people don't learn anything else from this interview. People don't you know, especially the people closest to you who actually love you. Yeah. They, don't, they don't crap on your idea because 
they want to discourage you, they actually think they're doing something for you. Yeah. You know, they're saving you from future disappointment. They're saving you from, oh, you are, are, are dreaming bigger than your circumstances. Who do yeah. we know who have ever done X, Y, and Z? And they think they're doing a good thing. Or it could just be as simple as, you know, they can't dream as big as you. Mm -hmm. Understand that's part of the process. Keep going. I don't care. If, if, if God gave you a dream, you go. You keep moving. All right. What's up, guys? Thanks for sticking with me to the end of the video. Truly appreciate you. If you like anything you heard here today, go ahead and hit that subscribe button. And if you know anybody that can benefit from this message, feel free to share. Peace and love.